Hi there, John here. Welcome to Avian First Aid, Episode 3. It's the end of January 2008 here in Edmonton, Alberta. It's the dead of winter around here. This morning when we woke up it was minus 39 degrees Celsius. It's a balmy minus 32 degrees out now. It's been about three months since the birds have been able to go outside and they're starting to go a little bit stir crazy inside. I think we all are. It's time for spring. In this episode we're going to cover assessing the situation. So your bird is hurt. It's time to find out what happened and just how bad he's hurt. So once, once you're prepared for an emergency to happen, now it happens. What do you do? First thing you need to do is you need to assess the situation and decide um, what you think the potential causes are, how serious it is, if you can handle it at home, or if you need to, to uh, move the bird into a, a veterinary facility. So what I normally would do, this always happens when you first get up, when you first get home from work, when you're leaving to go to somewhere you have tickets to and you can't be late. <clears throat> so look at the situation and, and see, is the bird standing? Is it recumbent? What organ system seems to be affected? Is it, is it respiratory? Is it breathing? Is it a uh, lameness or an injury? Is it bleeding? Um, is it just laying there and you don't know what's going on? But try and assess what system you think um, you're dealing with, because that will help you decide what you're going to need to do. Um, with the breathing, if you can smell any sort of toxin, the neighbors decided to paint and the fumes are coming into your apartment, the first thing you want to do is get get the ventilation improved. So if there's an area where the ventilation is better, move the bird to that area. If it's summer and you can open a window, um, you'll want to do that. Often if it is from an, in an inhaled toxin that hasn't damaged the rest of the body, um, just getting that bird ventilated within 10 or 15 minutes, they can be very close to back to normal. You may still want to have them assessed because some toxins can do damage to liver and, and such later, but then at least you've prevented the immediate <clears throat> problems and if you did decide to transport the bird, you've made the bird um, healthier so that during the transport it's less likely to be stressed and have more problems. Low blood sugar, that's um, it's, I'm, I'm using that as an example, it isn't that you can say, oh I can see that bird has low blood sugar. But what often happens is if they've been struggling, say their foot is caught in a toy or their beak is caught on something or they've been straining to um, push an egg, what can happen is they can use up their body stores and they're not obviously eating and therefore their blood sugar is getting low. Blood sugar to the body is like gasoline to a car. If you don't have enough, things start shutting down. So many times if the, if the bird appears weak, or wobbly, or you know, unable to stand. Um, it's and you think that you can see from the situation the bird might have been caught or straining, or you know, doing something where it was exerting itself for a long period of time. Um, in your emergency kit, um, you should have some type of sweetener, and I like having corn syrup because if the bird is no longer able to swallow, you can take corn syrup and you can smear it on the mucous membranes, um, on the tongue and inside the mouth, and they'll absorb sugar through the mucous membranes without choking them, whereas if you try to give um, sugar solutions with a syringe and they're not swallowing, you can get it in the lungs and they can choke on it. So if you have a little bit of that on hand, most people have it anyway, um, that would work if you think that um, they've been struggling and their blood sugar might be low. Once you do that, don't handle them. Um, leave them alone because it'll take five to ten minutes for it, for it to absorb through the mucous membranes and get in the circulatory <coughs> system. And often you'll, you'll see a bird that is standing there hunched over, eyes closed, and if you give them a little bit of sugar, um, it's, it's like what you don't want to do to your children at night. <clears throat> they, they perk all up and um, they may not get 100%, but it perks them up enough that you can then get them warm, get fluids into them, assess whether there's been any bleeding or fractures or bruising or other things. Whereas 
if you are too quick to move them and do too much with them, try to too feed them and all of that initially, it might be just that little additional bit of stress that they don't make it because their heart can't function. Bleeding is a fairly obvious one um, to, to tell. One of the things that you want to do when you assess bleeding is if you can tell where it's come from, that's good. If you can tell if it's still bleeding or if it's stopped, um, that's good. And to roughly estimate how much blood loss there is, is a good thing to do. Now that's very difficult to do when you see if it's smeared on the walls and all everywhere. So what you can do for fun and Halloween's coming up, so it'd be kind of good, is take some red Kool-Aid, put it in a syringe so you know how much is in there, and make a mess, and then you have an idea of what does five mils look like? What does 10 mils look like? And it's kind of fun for kids too to do that. But it, but it is useful because then when I say how much blood is lost, instead of just saying, I don't know, it's all over the cage, you know, you, you can say, I think it's about this much or, or whatever. And that's really useful to know because again, that, tell, that helps you decide if you're doing food replacement, how much, how much foods you could give, how often, how likely the bird is to be anemic or able to um, accept handling. They made us do that in vet school. It was kind of fun. <laughs> so that's your, your initial assessment. You've kind, of, you've kind of said, you know, what system, what organ system am I dealing with? And how serious is it? And do I need to do any kind of stabilization before we move the bird and kind of move on to the, um, to the next step? We've assessed the situation and we've tried to stabilize the bird as best we could but the bird is sick or injured and needs to go to the vet. So the next step would be to transport the bird. We'll cover that on the next episode. Ciao.